Hello, History of Medicine students. I hope you're all doing well. This is Professor Bowen here with some guidelines, tips, and instructions for the final part of your research projects. It has been a long journey, and now you're at the last assignment for this project. So what are you supposed to do? What are my expectations for this assignment, and how can you meet them? These are the questions I'm going to talk about in this short video, and in getting to them, I first want to clarify what I'm not looking for in this assignment. The name of the game here is revision. For part four of your project, I'm not asking you to write a paper, I'm not asking you to annotate any of your sources, I'm not asking you to create an entirely new proposal. If we had more time to work on this, those would be the logical next steps, but we only have one semester, and besides, my teaching goals for this project have had more to do with creation and design than with implementation or execution. Hopefully, by this point in the semester, I've succeeded in impressing upon you just how much work is required at the beginning stages of a project. You have all certainly done a lot of work, a whole lot of work, and hopefully this has been a valuable learning experience for you. If you're not convinced of this, let me just remind you of how far you have all come. You all started this project with some really big general questions. You wanted to know about changes that spanned many centuries, about comparisons across many different parts of the world, and about connections between people's past and present. All of these questions were amazing, and they're exactly the kinds of things that professional historians like myself are interested in. But in order to get at these huge, complex questions, historians have learned that it's best to begin with something much smaller. For example, a specific text, a singular event, or a particular individual or group. Following in these methodological footsteps, with each step of the research process, you have refined the chronological, geographical, and topical scope of your project. Until finally, you've arrived at something that is very specific, something that you can approach in a very concrete, grounded manner. You've arrived at a question that can be definitively, conclusively addressed, and at a historical process that can be identified and known. Much of your project's evolution has been guided by your growing awareness of what other historians have had to say about your topic. And in researching some of this literature, you've learned something incredibly valuable about the craft of history about what it is to reconstruct the past. You've learned about the kinds of questions that historians can and can't answer. You've learned about the benefits and limits of various kinds of historical data. And you've learned about how historians generally go about trying to figure out how and why things change over time. In short, you've learned something about how to think like an historian. At the same time, you've equipped yourself with some skills that should be transferable to classes in other departments and programs, whether in the social sciences and humanities or in other fields. Just ask yourself, before taking this class, did you know how much work was required in the beginning stage of a project? Did you know what a painstaking effort finding relevant scholarship can be? Did you know how much time and effort was required to produce a quality research question? Did you know how to frame your own work in a way that engages existing scholarly debates while also trying to further these debates in a way that makes an original contribution to knowledge? As we all work at a research university, I wouldn't be surprised if you answered at least some of these questions in the affirmative. At the same time, I hope that this class has sharpened your academic research skills and given you some new research tools. Among other things, 
you've learned that designing a research project comes about not just through abstract thinking, but through a continual back and forth discussion between you and your sources. And this is a discussion that does not proceed in a linear fashion. It includes regular trips back to the drawing board. It often requires you to rip things up and start all over again. But no matter how frustrating it is, it's always beneficial because we're always learning both from the setbacks and from the breakthroughs. We're learning about how to study the world and its peoples, how to ask meaningful questions about the world, how to ask answerable questions and how to approach these questions and how to acquire and analyze data pertaining to these questions. And so again, I hope that this process has proved to be a valuable one for all of you. The final part of this project is where you'll showcase everything you've learned about historical research. Consider it a final opportunity to show me and also show yourself how much that you've grown as a researcher over the course of the last few months. For me personally, it's been truly humbling, humbling and incredibly rewarding to watch each of your projects evolve over the semester and to see how with every step of the way, you've gotten better and better at refining and honing your research questions, at discovering sources connected to these and deriving insights from these sources that leads to fresh insights and new knowledge. I am really so proud of all of you and I can't wait to see what you produce come the end of the semester. So finish strong. Flex those academic muscles, revel in your own abilities, and use them to produce something truly magnificent. Now, to come down off of my soapbox just a little bit, uh, let me talk for a bit about the particulars of the final assignment for this research project. For the final part of the project, your goal is to make improvements to each of your previous submissions. That is, the proposal, the primary source bibliography, and the secondary source bibliography. And then to package all of these revisions together into a single document that will be delivered for review. Uh, and just a note here, by revisions, I mean making improvements, making corrections, and strengthening the document. I'm using the American English version of the word revision, uh, not the British English version. If you're curious, in British English, to revise means simply to review or to study. Uh, but in American English, revision is something very different. It's about strengthening, correcting, and improving. And that's what I'm looking for here. As I said before, revision is the name of the game here. The changes that you make to these documents should reflect the comments that I've given you on your initial drafts. Indeed, in large part, the grade that you receive on part four will be based on how effectively you attend to the criticisms and suggestions I made in my feedback on parts one through three of the project. Failure to improve upon these previous submissions in a manner consistent with my comments will likely result in a grade lower than that received on any previous assignment connected with this project. While the revisions you undertake here should address the past concerns that I've raised regarding your proposal and your bibliographies, I also have some more general, universally applicable suggestions to share about how to strengthen each part of the project. And these are as follows. Beginning with the proposal. So, your final version of this should reflect and take advantage of what you've learned from your primary and secondary sources. Whereas your initial draft was written without much knowledge of the topic you'd chosen to research, you now hopefully have a much more firm command of the literature, or at least some of it. Reading through your sources, you've likely identified some gaps in the existing scholarship, and doubtless you have some ideas about how those gaps could be filled. Your discoveries here are worth mentioning, as the final version of your proposal should be pitched as a justification for carrying out the project that you have envisioned. 
What have historians already said about your topic? How does your research help us advance existing discussions and debates on this? How might the questions you're asking, the approach you're taking, or the sources you're working with result in an original contribution to knowledge on your topic? These are the questions I'm looking for you to address with the last version of your proposal. And because doing these things might take some time, it's okay if your proposal is a bit longer than the one you started out with. Ideally, this should be around two to three paragraphs, or approximately 450 to 700 words. Next, the bibliographies. A lot of the advice I'm giving here is pretty straightforward, but just to make sure we are all on the same page, first, please do replace any sources that I have flagged as inappropriate or unhelpful in previous submissions. Secondly, be sure to fix any citation errors. Third, please also create separate subheadings for the primary sources and the secondary sources. I want you to list these separately, so don't put them all together. And lastly, You should feel free to make improvements to any of the sources in your bibliographies. If you find something that's better than what you had in the past that reflects the current most mature status of your project, please go ahead and make these changes. Your bibliographies are not set in stone. Even if I've okayed something in the past, you can make modifications here. Okay, so that's all I have to say. These are my expectations for part four of the research project. I hope that you have all found this helpful. Of course, if you have any questions or if you would just like some advice about how to help revise the various parts of your project, please do feel free to ask for help. I'd be happy to meet with you during office hours, and I'm also available for separately scheduled appointments. I am really, really proud of the excellent work you've all done on these projects over the course of the semester, and I'm excited to see how it all turns out. So, here's to a good end for the semester and your research projects. All right, I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye. I'll see you all later.